Hello everybody, welcome back to the Carver's Wood Shop. I'm getting ready to do some painting. I need to get some other things yet to clean up the brushes and stuff. So I'll be right back. All right, I'll be right back. We're getting started here in a little bit. I'm just getting some things together. And, uh, let's see. All right. We're getting there. I see some people are tuning in already. We're going to, I'm going to share with you some of the painting techniques that I use. Uh, painting is something everybody likes to do, but we won't start this until uh, 8 o'clock. Give us another four minutes, and we'll get ready to start here in a little bit. Let me go get a couple other things. Alright, I'm coming back here. Usually I don't paint in the house, but I will for a little while here. And this is a very simple thing to paint. But um, we'll be right back, folks. I'm going to get myself some hot chocolate while we're waiting for other people to join us. And uh, I'll take it from there. We start at 8 o'clock. Let's see what time it is. We're getting nine people here already. That's good. Two more minutes to go. Hello, Nancy and Justin and Doug and Tebbles. All right, there's 17 people. We're going to show you some of the techniques on carving here. I mean, of uh, painting. One more minute. Hello, Jack and Jenny. Half of the cheesecake is now gone. Thought I'd let you know. We're, st we're starting a minute or so. Waiting for my hot chocolate to get done, and then we'll start. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, 
Okay, got my hot chocolate. I'm ready to start. All right, hello everybody. Welcome again to another live Carver's Wood Shop. Well, we're not going to carve today. We're going to do some painting. And um, these things are really easy to paint. They're not difficult to do. And uh, what we're going to do is mix a couple of colors together. Let me just explain a couple of things to you about painting. Painting is not one of the most favorite things that I like to do. And if you surveyed a bunch of wood carvers, they probably would say the same thing. Painting is not one of their favorite things. Now, some people, uh, some people really enjoy it. Other people don't. Um, I'm not, I've learned to enjoy it, but I usually wait till I have like 30 or 40 pieces or 20 pieces and I paint them all at once. That way I don't have to mix up the paints as often. So what I use a lot are these little acrylic paint that we, we use, um, and they come in like in a two ounce, two ounces. You can buy them much bigger, like in an eight ounce. And it's not really that much cheaper to do it that way, unless they're on sale. But I usually get white, black, and the pumpkin color in the bigger bottles because the pumpkin's kind of hard to find. When I do my pumpkins, I don't mix the color. I use it right out of the out of here. But a lot of times when you when you do this carving, um, uh, hi Justin, uh, when you do the carvings, what you want don't want it to look like is a piece of ceramic when it's done. So what you want to do is what they call a wash. And what a wash is, it's part water, okay, a lot of water, and some some of the paint. And you make it thin enough that you can still see the wood the wood through through the paint. And I might when I do these, I I usually do two coats of the brown two or three of the green and then just a little bit of the white to show like it's a little bit of snow. The other thing I use a lot of is I use a paint stick. What this is is just a dowel with a ha with a nail hammered in and then I cut the nail off and I take it to a little grinder and I put a point on it. And when I put it in, I put a little bit of glue in so it stays in. Um, I already usually at the top of this you're going to put a hook on it anyway so uh, I usually put you can use this as a little pilot hole but I usually push it all the way down so now your hand is free to move this thing around without touching it and it really handy if you um, are doing a lot of carvings I usually do it at the bottom of the carving when I'm doing um, Santa's and things like that so let's get started with this uh, this piece um, I already have something already mixed, okay? I use a lot of these old bottles from Turkey Hill um, iced tea. I like their iced tea. And let's see. And this is the consistency that you want, okay? I, I buy these at Walmart. They're really cheap. I think they're like $2.50, two fifty, two two ninety five, or 3 bucks for like 50 of these. And they come with little um, covers. The only problem with that, you can save it, say you're going to paint today and do the rest tomorrow. You can put it in one of these for about a week or two, but if you put it in for any longer, they, for a long period of time, they will dry out because it's not completely sealed. Okay, so that's a little darker than I like. I like a little bit more of a red color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit, something a little bit different. Let me just pour this back in here, if I can do it without getting it all over the rug here. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of, I usually mix with this, I usually mix the Burr Number Sienna with, um, with a Burr Number, Burr Number and Burnt, Burnt Sienna, the two I mix together. So it's a darker and the red color. And I'll show you the difference in the red color here. See how red that is? This straight brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some of this in here. And you don't need a lot because, as you can tell, it's really, really thick. You can see it's sitting on the top there. So you're just going to take your, your brush. And, you know, if you put too much water in it, then you put a little more paint in it, you know. So let's mix that in, see if that will change that color a little bit, uh, a little bit more of a reddish color. 
I find that the pine cones are a little bit more on the reddish side anyway. And if that's not enough, well then you want to make sure that when you mix this, that you're taking your brush. See how the little there's little pieces on the carving uh, on the on the paintbrush. You want to make sure that's completely mixed because you don't want to have these little specks ending up being darker on your on your carving. You want to make sure everything's done really really fine. Okay, you see it got a little bit more on a reddish color. I don't know if you can tell that on the um, hello Lynn. Um, I don't know if you can tell that. So what I do is when I do my carvings, I never ever, I never ever sand them. I use a knife to clean up anything I need to clean up. I use a knife to clean it up. You start sanding it, like I explained last week. When you end up sanding it, you end up um, uh, having a darker spot because it will absorb more of the paint, and that's one thing you don't want. All right, so. This is how I do it. I usually use a flat brush and I start just going around up. I usually do the brown first anyway. I would have liked this a little bit more red, but it will it will get a little bit lighter. I might get away with one coat, but usually if you do two coats is the reason. I'll show you the reason you would do two coats. This only has one and I'll tell you how you can tell. See the spots I missed? You think you get everything, but until it dries and you look at it, you don't really see that. And I usually paint with, not this way, down. I usually paint it with it up that I can see the bottom part of those scales. Somebody said they're called scales, so I'll, I'll call them scales. All right, so what we're going to do is just try to get every nook and cranny. And you can load up your brush pretty well and just keep going. This won't be a long... This won't be a long class, but uh, painting is when if you're doing birds or anything like that, uh, you're going to end up um, doing a wash because uh, when people do their birds and they do all those wood burnings on the face, uh, if you put straight paint on it, it is going to clog up every line that you spent hours and hours working on. So that's one thing you don't want to do is to clog it up. So it's better to put two coats on than one. If you really want to do it right, even with this, even my Santas I do twice because um, it just evens it out. And at the end of the end of the, um, it will soak up a little bit more here at the grain down, the end grains here. So, but painting is something that you kind of have to get used to. Um, like I said, a lot of carvers do not like to paint. They would rather sit here and carve, which is nice, but your, your painting is really going to define your piece. You can have a beautiful piece done, but if you don't do the painting right, um, it can really make the difference. To give you an example, I was a judge, uh, one, a couple of times I was a judge, and um, I noticed there was a piece. We really loved the piece. It was great, but the painting kind of messed it up. So um, some people don't like to do the um, they don't like to do the painting at all, and they just leave it plain, and that's fine too. Or they just put like a, a dye on it or a um, a stain. I'm sorry, a stain. You can do that as well. You could probably put a stain on here as well. That would work. I'll tell you a little bit about antiquing as well. I won't be able to show you everything right here because I don't have everything with me right here to do the antiquing, but I'll explain it very easily. Antiquing is a very simple solution I came up with a number of years ago, and I still do the same procedure for that. So we're almost done with the bottom part, okay? And if you look at it, you see I missed, the part, I missed a little piece there and a little piece there and there. So I might do a second coat um, if I don't if I can get it all at once tonight I will I'll just have to look over it real quick but um, it's always good to um, let it dry and go back to it and do it a second coat. Now drying it you can use a hair dryer because this is water based. Uh, if you really want to speed things up you can actually absolutely um, use a hair dryer. Um, when I used to do birds and I would do 10 coats of black on the chickadees, I used a hair dryer because it would take too long to wait. 
a couple of hours or an hour, and a hair dryer would take care of it right away. You notice I'm kind of doing my second. The second coat, always like painting a house, the second coat is always easier. It's the first coat that takes a lot of the, a lot of it right away. You know, a lot of more effort to cover it. Hello, Steve and John. I'm looking at it once in a while here. I can't look at it the whole time. I'll answer some questions here. If you have some questions, I'll be happy to answer those for you. Uh, painting, everybody, it's like sharpening. Everybody does it differently. Some people will will uh, use different types of antiquing. Um, I came up with a, a way of doing it that I thought was safe. See, see that? I missed that part. See you really have to turn it upside down because if you make these cuts deeper, it's going to take you more, a little more time to get it just right. So that's the bottom part of the the pine cone. All right. So uh, this works out really well. So now I'm going to switch. What I usually do is I have a cup of water next to me and I usually shake out my my brush and I have a paper towel as precious as paper towels are now because you can't find them anywhere in the store along with toilet paper and what's the other one sanitizer um, you know commodities today are really hard to get a hold of um, but anyway paper towel I usually rub my rub my brush into it until it's completely clean up okay so I'll do one more time. So I have one cup of water that I use to rinse until I get all the stuff out of it. Now the green. I didn't have any pre-mix. Use a pine cone. It's called a pine cone green. I don't know if you can get this particular um, brand anymore. I don't know. I got this out in Michigan some time ago. And uh, let me see if I can get some in a little bit in a... In a uh, it's really it's really thick in in the bottles. It takes a while to get it out. Okay, notice how much I put in there. So little bit. Now the reason I mix big batches is so that I don't have to do this each and every time. So I do a lot of red when I do my Santas. Uh, I always do my Santas in two coats, and I put a red um, a container about this size, a Turkey Hill container. That's a 16 ounce, and I'll fill about halfway full of red, and I usually mix up the reds. Um, with this, uh, I have another bottle of clean water right here, and we'll just pour a tiny bit into here. There we go. And I'm going to mix that with a brush. That might be a little bit too much, so I'm going to dump a little bit of this out. You can always add more water to it. It's harder to get the water out if it's too thin. Um, oh, that's way too thin. <laughs> I'll just make more of a batch here. Okay. I'm going to pour more of this out. Like I said, I didn't have any of this ahead of time. So let's dump some more in. If you have a lighter green, you can always mix a little bit of brown to darken it. Um, if it's too light, you can mix some brown with it. Or black, but I, I prefer using brown. Uh, it took me a while to learn how to mix paints. Um, you really do a lot of experimentation. That's all I would do. Um, hello, Richard. Um, or Rich. Um, I think you're from New Jersey. Thank you for joining me, folks, um, if you just tuned in. All right, so now we have this done. And again, you want to make sure that it's not clogged up in your brush, the thick stuff. Otherwise, it'll get really crazy. I love these little flat ones or the skew uh, brushes. They're so handy. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start from the top. Let's turn this this way that you can see it better. And we're just going to go... All the way around the top. Now I'll show you how to, I put the white on after we're done here. But the white, I won't look quite right because it's got to be really dry when you do your last coat of white to make it look like the snow. Otherwise, it's going to look like a 
neon green because white and green I will make it a very light if the green is not dry but you notice I'm trying to get each and every crevice as well and it really does start to make it look like a pine cone those pine cone needles now now what I usually do for the under part I, I load up my brush a little bit and I just slowly gently go around the outside I don't have my glasses on so out of the room I had one of my productive unproductive days today with trying to mow the yard today this week and uh, I'm gonna need another lawnmower I think finally after 20 years but uh, but anyway it's one of those days but I hope everybody's staying well and staying home um, it's been really a, a different time for sure see I missed the spot there but I'm just gonna fill it with a little green for now see you can get away with that because it sits underneath so and I use the corner and a lot of it you have to learn how much how much you can put on the brush you can't just load it like this without dripping it off a bit like you just saw it just helps you control because you don't want it dripping and running down into another color and I'll share with you real quick when you're doing a Santa or you're doing from red to uh, white I usually load the brush up and I start in the middle like I would start in the middle and work my way to the edge because by the time you get to the edge most of your thick water or, or color will be already soaked into the wood and you won't be bleeding it into somewhere else so I usually work from the center to the outside instead of from the outside to the center um, it works out better that way and it, it controls the uh, the flow of the if you have too much on your brush you can get rid of it in the middle versus trying to control where it goes on the edge all right so now this will need a second coat for sure I can see that already um, and this is all I do is these two colors uh, all three and the white and the white is used to do the top let me go get the other let me just let that sit for a second let me get the other one out of here okay so when you get the green on really well I'll show you how I do the white the white is more of a brush on real quick it's nothing fancy and then we put a little hook at the top and then um, before I do that what well, I put the hook on the top and then I antique everything okay and I'll explain what the antiquing is in just a second all right let me go back to this and see if I can finish this up a little bit better I'm not going to be able to do the second because I'm going to have to wait at least 30 40 minutes because I don't have the hair dryer with me. You can use a hair dryer to clean to speed up the process. A lot of carvers do, especially if it's water based. If it's oil, well, that's not going to help you as much. But all right, so all right, so that's our that's our piece. I'm going to pull this out and just do the top a little bit yet because if you don't, you put the white on it, you might be able to see that color different difference if you don't do the whole top okay um, so there's our there's our piece now when I do the white on this I just want to share this with you um, when I do the white now as it dries you can start seeing it starting to look spotty because these areas are drying already um, and if it's too light you just put another coat on it's easier to put another coat on than to put it on too thick okay so uh, sorry about that um, anyway um, what we're going to do is uh, and if I want really want this a lot darker I can just do it almost straight from the tube this this particular color wasn't exactly what I wanted to put on here but I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you get it painted and done okay so as this is drying a bit 
I'll share before I put the white on. I'll share about the uh, about the antiquing. Antiquing. Hang on just a second. Okay. Um, what I'll have to do. Let me turn this down for a second here. Okay. All right. So what we're doing uh, here is uh, when you antique, and you don't see it as much on here, but it just gives it a nice little feel and, and a finished product than just leaving it plain. This is, I don't know if you can tell online, but this is one that has been done, this one not. You see the little bit of a sheen that it has on it versus not. I use mineral oil. You can get that at any Walmart or any drugstore or any pharmacy. And I take, I usually get the pint and I take half of it out and I dump it in another container and I leave a half in. And then I get the burn umber, what's it called? The burn umber oil base, not water oil base because you're putting it into oil I, I take one I take a tube and I take about an inch strip out of that and I throw it in that bottle that I emptied half out half emptied out and I shake that up to death and it should be the consistency of coffee when you're done uh, it should be um, at least a dark coffee or medium coffee and if you're doing it right so when you pour that mix into a little bowl like this uh, to do your antiquing after you mix it in the thing, you're going to see these little flecks in it. You're going to have to take your brush like we did with this and, and just mash it and make sure you get rid of each and every one of them because if you don't, you're going to have brown streaks all over the place. Let me see if I can find... I'll be right back. Let me find the... Uh, so I can show it to you. here. Didn't think I had it in the house. I thought I had it over at the, the shop. Here's the mineral oil. Okay. See the consistency of that? That is oil and that burn umber. The, but you need the oil base. So you have to go to a like a hobby store. I, I used to go to AC more. I don't know if they're around anymore. But you can go to M Michael's or Hobby Lobby and get it. It comes in a tube. And here's the tube. It just, it's just working out tonight. See that? Here's the tube. Okay. And it will say burn number. The outside is gone. And then you undo this and you take just a little strip out and you throw it in a half full of the mineral oil and you mix it and mix it and mix it. And you, you take care of it as much as you can. And then I don't know if you can see the floaters in there. So if you little see how it's it's separating, you, if you shake it up, watch I'll shake it up. See how it's clear on the top, and it's and it's kind of um, dark. It's settling on the bottom. You can probably see it there more than anywhere else. See how it's separated. If you if I shake this up, see that the whole thing is now mixed. So it doesn't take a lot to do that. So once you have that, you want to Pour that in one of the, one of these, and you want to take out all the flex, and then I lather this to death. You know, I, t I have a real wide brush that's, and then I, if it's too much, I take a paper towel or a t-shirt material, and I just dab it off if it's too much. But that gives it a real, and then I set it aside for a while, and I let it, you know, I let it dry. Now, technically. This oil will never really dry, so if you want to put another coat on later, if you didn't think the antiquing was dark enough, you can put a second coat on. Or you can make it a little bit darker. It's your own preference of what you want to do with it. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, you, can, you can absolutely um, use your own judgment in The reason I use this is because there's no smell to this. There is no... Um, flammable oil they say all oil can be flammable 
I don't know, people drank this stuff. So, so I don't know how flammable this is. But, um, you know, if you want to use it and you want to put it on um, on your pieces, it does a real nice job of doing the antiquing. And that's how I do all my antiquing, whether it's, whether it's the uh, birds or whatever I'm working on. Um, Santa's birds, ornaments, they all get that antiquing. And you can see, here, see, see the difference in the color? This one's a little bit redder than this one. But see the sheen on here? This one does not have the sheen on it. And that's because of that oil. It's not a, exactly a satin color to it. But, um, okay, so let me show you real quick. Let me clean up my brush one more time from the green. This is not going to look exactly right, but I'm going to show you how I do it anyway. Because I can go back after it dries and redo it. It's very hard to mess up a piece like this. So I take my white... And I actually dip it in the thick part of the white. Let's see. Okay. Just like so. And I usually, if it's on paper, I can use the paper. I usually take the excess off. And then I just start from the top. And I just kind of just brush it just like so. Okay. That's it. That's how I do it. And then I finish this up up here. And... That's it. And then I'll go back over it maybe once or tw twice. But I leave that idea that the green is on the outside. Just like here. Okay? And that's how these are, are painted. And this is how you antique them. It's not a difficult... This is really one of the easiest things to paint. It's easy if you have a bunch of them together. I did a whole Christmas tree. I think it was a five-foot tree. I had 60 of these made in my shop at Christmas time when I sold them. And that the beauty of it is I had all different sizes. I had little ones, I had big ones, I had small ones. Now this came much later. They didn't have any faces. They were all just a plain pine cone. And they are really a lot of fun. So when you finish up your piece and you antique it and you put that little hook on there, uh, some people have asked where did I get the hook? Um, or the eye screw on the top. Some people make their own, but I thought it wasn't worth it for me to try to make my own. I've done it in the past with fish hooks, where I would cut them, and just the last part of the fish hook was enough of a circle that you could put a uh, an ornament hanger on it. That was this was much easier. I bought these um, by the hundred. I think I paid five or six dollars or something like that for a hundred and they come in different sizes so I had several different ones that I picked up uh, some I use for, the bigger ones I use for the bigger ones and then I have smaller ones you can get them in brass you can get them in gold you can get in all kinds and silver I have sil silver gold and brass color uh, or bronze and I like the bronze because it doesn't stick out a whole lot. You notice it kind of blends in with the piece. So if you have any questions, I'll be more than willing to answer them. I know this is a very short period of time. I'm thinking maybe next week. Um, I don't know if it would be this Thursday. Maybe I'll stir up my birds uh, that we did. Now, I did put this on YouTube. I will put this one on YouTube as the number two for the pine cone for the painting. And... Um, I noticed the the quality was not as good as it was before, okay? So uh, then if I did it in my studio where I took the camera and, and did everything the old way, it's not as, as clear. It's a little blurry. And I think it. Uh, I'll have to see if I can find another program that can take care of that because I'd rather do it here and then put it onto YouTube that if you want to watch it live, that you can. All right, so um, if you don't have any questions for me, um, you know, we'll sign off here in a little bit. I know um, people have asked, where do, where do you get the paints? You can get them at Walmart. If you don't find it at Walmart, you can go to Michael's or AC Moore or Hobby Lobby um, that you want to go to. Um, the This stuff, again, I got this at... Um, Walmart, the brushes you can get at Walmart. You can get a majority of it at Walmart. Um, thank you, Jack. I appreciate the comment. Um, 
you know, I, I think if you really want to have more classes like this, give me an idea. I want to do my little birds. Let me go get a few. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've been doing some casting and molding of my projects. Um, some of you have known about that for a while. But I'll show you. This is the cardinal that I've done already. And this is the one that's done out of the molding. Okay? See how pretty close they are. Now the bill is a little bit different color. Um, you know, they 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 turned out really nice. Um, but this is the wooden one, this is the cast one. Um, and this is what they look like when they're white. <laughs> and pure white. Okay, so I did about 15 of those. I'm, I'll be sending one of those out. As far as mailing anything, people, I have to set up an account and all that. I'm not sure how to do all that yet. I used to go just to the post office. But I'm trying to stay away from crowds like everybody else. So, uh, But be a nice project to do and then I have the chickadee that we can also do there's a whole line of these and the bluebird I have a blue jay that comes out of the same thing as this okay um, you can make this you can do one pattern you can do a blue jay or a cardinal out of it out of the chickadee you can do the bluebird the chickadee or the goldfinch. So you really have a variety of things you can do with just two patterns. You can make five different birds. And you're just going to paint them different. That's all that's to that. So these were really a lot of fun. I designed these last year. And I. some people have asked, when, I'm go when am I going to do a video? Well, if I don't do it here, I will do it on YouTube. I just still have some things I need to get done here around the farm and all. Um, since my helpers didn't come down this year, <laughs> I'm not blaming them. Um, I'm getting a lot done, despite everything, but, uh, but we'll see how things go. But like I said, the painting isn't always the most fun part for me. It's, um, you know, I usually like doing the carving part better. And these are like two and a half inches tall by one and a half by one and a half. They're out of a block, like all my other stuff. Okay, folks, I think I'll wrap this up. I hope you all have a good night. And um, thank you for all the comments and for the, the encouraging words. And thank you uh, for being so kind to me today. All right, and I'll put this on YouTube so you can watch it again. I'll leave it up on Facebook for a little bit until I switch it over later tonight. All right. Take care, folks, and have a great night. Be safe. Don't go out if you don't have to. And uh, hang in there. Hang on just a second. Let me see what somebody else asked about here. Let's see here. Okay. No. Um, yeah, I'm missing some of these. Let's see here. Okay. It says, do you put the finish? Do you put a finish on after to protect your paint job? Yeah, that's the antiquing that I do, Justin. When I finish the painting, that's that's what I'm finishing it off with the antiquing. Let me scroll back up and see if there's any other questions. All right. All right. Well, that's that's fine, folks. You have a great night. And like I said, stay in. And we'll do this again real soon. And I'll post it on my Facebook page mm -hmm. where you found this. All right. Hi, Lori. Uh, okay. Take care. And... Uh, be safe. Bye-bye, folks.